Hi, everybody, and welcome to the 11th episode of the Medical Cannabis Now series. With the new year approaching, we wanted to go over healthy living as we all begin to consider our new year's resolutions. In this episode, I'm going to cover a wide range of topics that apply to our overall health. As the weather gets colder and the days become shorter, mental and physical health become more important than ever. And these two are closely intertwined. I'm gonna be discussing the importance of good gut health, combating seasonal affective disorder, exercise, social support, and how the endocannabinoid system could affect them. Many view medical cannabis as only useful for specific medical conditions. However, there are those who simply want to utilize medical cannabis as perceived prevention against disease and illness. Maintaining our well-being is important, and cannabis can possibly play a role. To better understand this, let's revisit the endocannabinoid system we love talking about. So the naturally occurring endocannabinoid system is said to affect our homeostasis. Um, balance in our body. A review of this system has said that it helps us relax, eat, sleep, and help to protect us. How it does this is still an area in need of research, but we know a lot already to help guide us. The endocannabinoid system has CB1 and CB2 receptors, also known as cannabinoid receptors, and they are found in many different organ systems. I like to use this visual to demonstrate how pervasive the endocannabinoid system is in the human body. This gives insight into why cannabis is said to help with many different symptoms that are seemingly unrelated. The endocannabinoid system, or ECS for short, is not activated only when there is disease, but is in constant ebb and flow to maintain our homeostasis. It is thought to be involved in all types of daily routines that our bodies go through. Because of this, we are seeing an increase in patients using medical cannabis simply for prevention. Expressions like, I have a bad feeling in my gut became popular for a reason. And that is because our mind, mood, stomach, and gut are all connected. The enteric nervous system, or ENS for short, is the controlling system of all things related to digestion and can trigger emotional changes within a person especially those who deal with gastrointestinal issues such as IBS or irritable bowel syndrome. Our enteric system contains CB1 and CB2 receptors throughout, and it is said to play a role in acquiring energy from the gastrointestinal system and using it. Cannabinoids that act on these receptors also act on other receptors in our gastrointestinal system that are outside of the endocannabinoid system. They could potentially be involved with lipid metabolism, GI motility, and secretion. In fact, there is evidence that increased tolerance to THC can slow down GI or gastrointestinal movements. Additionally, they also affect appetite control and immune function. Overall, when it comes to good health, gut health is always a factor. So where does cannabis come in? There are several ways to maintain a healthy digestive system and eating habits. And the first is eating with the right foods, such as fermented foods, fiber-rich foods, and vegetables, but also eating at, a, at regular intervals. Doing so helps improve gut health and maintain regular hunger and fullness cycles. However, many patients complain of having poor appetite and poor eating habits. So appropriate dosing of medical cannabis can help a patient create a better eating routine and stimulate appetite. It has been shown that endocannabinoids, our body's naturally occurring cannabinoids, will increase in between meals. And as it increases, it can trigger hunger and the levels will drop once that person eats. As for eating the right foods, you may hear experts talk about probiotics. There is evidence that CB2 receptors in your gut could possibly stimulate natural probiotic bacteria and help with gut immunity. Due to cannabis's and especially CBD's anti-inflammatory and analgesic effects, we commonly prescribe to patients suffering from IBS or inflammatory bowel syndrome or disease. For the gastrointestinal system, we recommend taking cannabis orally in a soft gel or oil form. When taking medical cannabis as an ingestible, 
an oil or soft gel. More research has surfaced, including one study from the University of Michigan that finds taking your medicine with a healthy fatty snack, such as an avocado or organic natural peanut butter, for example, can increase the absorption rate of the medicinal components of the cannabis. There is overwhelming anecdotal and other evidence to support the use of medical cannabis for GI disorders and maybe even for overall GI health. The next big thing that affects our overall well being is our mood. And right now, our collective mental health is truly being tested given the ongoing pandemic. Our mood affects how we relate to our environment and can manifest itself as physiological symptoms such as headaches and, as mentioned above, GI problems. During winter months, many report adverse effects on mood, such as seasonal affective disorder due to the lack of time spent outdoors and shorter days. In turn, it affects sleep, appetite, energy, and other aspects of life. Mood is also affected by innate factors within ourselves, such as hormones and other brain chemicals. One of the top pieces of advice given for anyone suffering from stress and overall poor mood is to meditate and practice mindfulness. However, this can be difficult to do as many patients find it hard to focus due to stress or their minds racing. Medical cannabis can help with the focus and promote better energy. Some say it helps to take the edge off and there is an abundance of anecdotal and of evidence that cannabis, especially CBD, helps with anxiety and elevating mood. However, cannabis and mental health is a controversial topic. So that being said, it has been shown that cannabinoids like CBD can bind to receptors in the brain that do affect mood. So when looking to use medical cannabis in any capacity, it is always beneficial to talk to a healthcare professional, but it is especially important to do so when using it for mental health. Medical history, medications, the type of symptoms you have, the severity, these can greatly impact the effect of cannabis on a patient. Other ways to improve mood when feeling down include socializing, bright lights, either natural or artificial, good sleep, and eating the right foods. So sleep. Firstly, I always dramatically say that sleep is the cure all. Our bodies need sleep in order to restore itself, process information from the day before, and allow for healing. Good sleep has been tied to preventing certain illnesses such as heart disease and preventing excessive weight gain. Poor sleep is often a great assault to our quality of life. Almost every patient at Apollo has complained of sleep disturbances. And many of these patients report positive effects of medical cannabis on their sleep patterns. Even in the few patients where medical cannabis might not help other symptoms, they always report improvement in sleep. If you want to learn more about sleep and medical cannabis, please check out episode nine, uh, where we go deeper into how medical cannabis may help our sleep and other insomnias. So exercise is crucial to our overall health and can help stave off many diseases and conditions such as arthritic pain and reducing the risk of heart disease. I am sure it is the number one New Year's resolution that is made every year. At the clinic, we have noticed an influx of patients wanting to use CBD for recovery after a workout or playing sports. More athletes are starting to use CBD as a tool in their belt for performance, quicker recovery, and muscle inflammation. National leagues are starting to recognize or ease restrictions on players using CBD. In fact, in 2018, the World Anti-Doping Agency removed CBD off of its list of prohibited substances. So how can CBD help? There is limited evidence on how CBD or medical cannabis can help specifically with muscle recovery. However, there is evidence that shows that CBD decreases inflammation by stopping pro-inflammatory markers and promoting anti-inflammatory markers. Therefore, it is thought that while inflammation is beneficial in some ways to recovery, CBD can help reduce the length of muscle soreness and provide a safer analgesic effect. It could possibly help improve exercise-induced uh, muscle damage. There is a study on mice with a type of muscular dystrophy looking at CBD and muscle regeneration. 
it found that a high dose of CBD in the gastrocnemius and diaphragm muscles improved muscle strength, coordination, as well as reduced tissue degeneration. Our patients do report CBD helping take the edge off having muscle soreness and assist them in recovery. However, this is a large area that is still in need of much research. So whether it's through a phone call or engaging online with friends, we shouldn't let social distancing prevent us from communicating with our friends and loved ones. It's long been documented that we are social creatures and our sense of belonging and community play a huge role in our overall happiness and self-worth. Shared experience gives us positive memories as well as a feeling of growth and motivation. Some studies have even shown that by interacting with others, we train our brains by improving memory formation and recall. One study at the Cognitive Neurology and Alzheimer's Disease Center found that those who are over the age of 80 who portray the mental agility of someone younger than them have one thing in common, and that is close friends. We recognize that many patients suffer from social anxiety or other conditions that prevent them from socializing and interacting with other people. Medical cannabis can help reduce the stress and anxiety associated with either the interaction itself or the condition preventing the patient from socializing, such as chronic pain. A positive outcome of using medical cannabis through a clinic, such as Apollo, is that there's a sense of community. By using medical cannabis, our patients have taken the initiative to also connect with others using cannabis, which leads to mutual support and meaningful interactions. There are many forums and websites out there meant to connect medical cannabis users to discuss treatments and inspire one another. So that is just the beginning of preventative health and how cannabis can play a role. Another common concern we see is brain health and dementia. Is there a way that medical cannabis can prevent dementia? Could it improve cognitive functioning? So we will touch on this topic in our next video. Now I'm gonna take a look at some questions that we received in the past week. A question we got is what are the best things that I can do to lower my blood pressure? So this is a difficult uh, question to answer because high blood pressure is not always attributable to one factor or one source. Some experts advise patients to find ways to relieve stress or eat healthier to reduce their blood pressure. Medical cannabis could certainly help with lowering stress levels but for blood pressure it's imperative to consult with a healthcare practitioner about what could be done and what could be the cause of your blood pressure and ways to lower it. The second question we've received is, I have a family history of diabetes. What things can I do to help prevent it? And does medical cannabis play a role for diabetic patients? Well, there is an epidemiological study done by the University of Nebraska that suggested that cannabis users had healthier insulin levels than their counterparts and had less insulin resistance. By having less insulin resistance or just healthy insulin levels, it's said to decrease the risk of having diabetes. However, there's no evidence right now that says using cannabis can prevent diabetes. And there's certainly no evidence to say that it will improve levels in those already diagnosed with diabetes. More research needs to be done and more research is being done. However, it is suggested that CBD and other cannabinoids could help alleviate the symptoms and damage done by diabetes, such as neuropathic pain, retinal damage, amongst many others. But again, there's, there's no evidence to make these conclusions, but there's certainly enough connections being made that it's definitely interesting enough to look into. So preventative health is about looking at the big picture and how each part affects each other. Eating well and digestion is affected by our brain, which is affected by our mood, which can influence or be influenced by our sleep. And so by understanding how cannabinoids work in each area, there could be room for us to use medical cannabis like we use our vitamins. But before we can do that, we need more research. I hope that we have given you some perspective on how to improve your health and maybe even inspire some new resolutions. If you'd like more information on the stuff that we've spoken about or like to reach out for an appointment, please feel free to visit us on our website 
or call the clinic. Thank you so much, and I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season.